Somalia TV journalist killed in Mogadishu suicide bombing. A Somali television journalist was killed Monday evening in a suicide bombing at a restaurant in Mogadishu, police said. Abdul Fatal Moarin Noel Quaze, who worked for Somali cable television, was fatally injured in the explosion at Blue Sky Restaurant near the National Museum. At around 21.00, Kawahij suicide bomber detonated explosives on people who were having tea outside the Blue Sky Restaurant in Bondheer District, police in Mogadishu said in a brief statement. Kahawalij or deviance is a term the government uses to refer to Al-Shabaab. Four other people were injured in the explosion, according to police. Security forces provided assistance to those impacted by the attack. Police said there is an ongoing investigation and any updates will be shared with the public. The station Quays worked for confirmed his death in a Facebook post. It said... Quaze was the director of the station's branch in Mogadishu. He was pronounced dead after we brought him to receive Hayib Edgon Hospital, said Abdishakul Mohammed Mohamud, who was among the journalists who took Quaze to the hospital. In a telegram message, the Al Shabaab militant group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. In the message, Al Shabaab said, a suicide bomber was behind the blast. The local media watchdog Somali journalist syndicate CGS condemned the violence. CGS strongly condemns this attack targeting our colleague Abdi Fatal Quiz. Our hearts go out to other community members who loved ones were at affected by this attack, CGS said in a statement. The attack comes as Somali President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud welcomed home new troops who had been training in Eritrea. Speaking at Mogadishu Airport, Mohamud told the soldiers to take one month leave before returning to join other soldiers engaged in the military operations against the Al Shabaab. According to the police in Mogadishu, a suicide bomber wearing suicide vest walked to a group of people who were having tea outside a popular restaurant in the center of Mogadishu and detonated uh, his explosives, killing a famous journalist in Mogadishu and injuring four other people. And uh, we don't know whether the journalist was the target but the restaurant locates in a very uh, relatively secure area of the city, not far from the National Museum. What is happening? It doesn't seem like uh, Al-Shabaab is uh, being defeated. They keep coming back. What is the, the government's plan now? Yeah, Al-Shabaab has been fighting against the Somali government for more than 16 years now. They claimed responsibility for this attack. They claimed they were targeting security personnel in the area. Uh, but during the many years that Al-Shabaab has been carrying out the attacks, journalists, academics, ministers, civilians, every member of the community was uh, killed in their attacks. Um, based on what we have seen and the reporting we have been making over the years. But the Somali government has been conducting military operations against Al-Shabaab to defeat the group. They have lost a lot of territories, but because the group has been in the country for such a long time, they have been training a lot of people, indoctrinating a lot of people. They still have the capacity to carry out suicide attacks like the one we have seen tonight in Mogadishu. I saw the president of uh, Somalia, uh, I think, welcoming his troops. Uh, what is it now? Returning home to contribute to the fight against Al-Shabaab. What can you tell us on that? Yeah, the Somali government has been under pressure to generate troops to take over responsibilities from the African Union peacekeepers in the country. And to do that, they needed to train thousands of new forces abroad, 
and uh, some of the countries that came forward to help Somalia included Eritrea, Ethiopia, Uganda, and even Egypt. And they, this government has started training nearly 10,000 troops in less than a year. And today, a unit of the soldiers who were trained in Eritrea returned to the country. And the president welcomed them at the airport. And he told them to get ready to join the fight against Al-Shabaab, which the government is undertaking as we speak. As we know, the government suffered some setbacks in the front lines in recent months. But nonetheless, uh, the government is determined to remove Al-Shabaab from center of Somalia and push them to the south so that there will only be one front line against Al-Shabaab. Harun, thank you so much. Again, a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Most welcome. Now, it's reporter Harun Maru for BOS Somali Language Service speaking with us from Washington, D.C. and features, visit our website at voaafrica.com. Connect with us on all social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For a runoff in November, the Constitution requires that a winner must get 50 plus 1 percent of total votes. The National Elections Commission, also known as NEC, released 92.98% of total results on Monday, with former Vice President Joseph Boakai of the Opposition Unity Party slightly ahead with 43.7% of total votes, and President George Weir with 43.65%. Meanwhile, Unity Party Chairperson Luther Tappe warned President Weir Monday not to tamper with the count. He also tells me that uh, the Elections Commission has been slowing the release of the re- results. You know, since after the elections, there have been a slow process of the counting of the votes of the Liberian people. And because of the crucial nature of these elections, we believe that NEC, the National Election Commission, should be able to calm the nerve of our people because they voted. There was massive turnout, and we almost one week. And so we believe that as a very formidable party in these elections, it's important that we calm the fears of our people, letting them know that we have all of our tally sheets. We clearly show that just a boy can have won elections. So you are warning the president, saying he should not tamper with the results. Do you have any evidence the president is tampering with the results? We have seen government officials driving into telling centers around the SKD, the sport complex, at a time when the telling center is closed officially to people. Why would they be doing that? People can only insinuate. Why would government officials do that with the, I mean, be trying to uh, get around? But usually when they get at the meter of heavily uh, armed security people guarding the place, why would they be doing that at those telling places? if they don't have uh, a clandestine plan of stealing the election. So there are a lot of signs that shown, like in Kakata, as I said, two men were arrested with guns near the talent center in Kakata. And our boys, our vigilante boys from our party, who are there, young people who want to protect their votes, have to record the Liberian police, and the police have to go and, uh, and then arrest those two people. So with all these games, what, what do you expect us to read into this? If they believe that they are one election, why would they be fanning around the place where votes have been tallied? And men will want to make their first of all and make their way into a place where tallying is going on. So all of these are clear indications that CDC is making frantic attempt to steal the election from the Liberian people. That was Luther Tarpe, chairperson of Liberia's main opposition unity party. He was speaking with us from the capital, Monrovia, in Liberia. The campaign manager for the ruling coalition for democratic change, CDC, says allegations by the opposition unity party that President Weir is trying to tamper with the results of the October 10 presidential and parliamentary elections are all a sign of panic that President Weir is winning. 
This comes as the National Elections Commission, also known as NEC, released 92.98% of total results on Monday, with former Vice President Joseph Boakai of the Opposition United Party slightly ahead with 43.7% of total votes, and President George Weir with 43.65%. Eugene Nabe, the campaign manager for the ruling CDC, tells me that the opposition is beating the drums of war in Liberia. In Liberia, our elections have been held in a free, fair, and transparent manner. All of the tally sheets that are being tabulated by the National Elections Commission are co-signed by the Liberal Party agents, including the United Party agents. So this new noise and this new panic that is being spread by the United Party is just because they are seeing from the result that they are losing, and therefore they have no recourse but to try to accuse the president when he's away from the retaliating process. The president voted and has since left the voting area. He has not gone near any tally center. He has not engaged himself in any activity. The way our elections are run, you vote, the votes are counted, the party agents sign, and then those votes are tallied at a central place that you have representatives of all the political parties. So they are... It should have a burden of showing what's the base of all of these accusations that they are making and trying to spread fear and panic and to beat the drums of war in our country. The president has a responsibility to ensure that our country is peaceful, and I can tell you that he will keep that responsibility. One of the things he cited is that uh, there are constant government officials showing up at polling centers or results counting centers, in a way intimidating the election officials. That is another mischievous lie, because we have to understand what the process is. Every political party is giving access by the National Elections Commission. All of our agents, whether they are officials of government or not, all members of the CDC, who have been accredited by the National Elections Commission have a right, and they are the ones who have been participating to represent the CDC at the tally centers. How is that intimidation? Most of those who are representing the UP are all former officials of government. You don't expect us to invent new human beings. So yes, all of those who are representing the CDP at the tally centers are accredited by the National Elections Commission. And that is how the process should be, and this is how the process is. How does that constitute intimidation? Again, the onus is upon these people to